So, very good afternoon boys and girls, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, brought the kids out to go for a bit of a picnic and I've brought the full spectrum Olympus EP1 with me. I've uh, got a 720 nanometer infrared filter on the front of it, so I thought we'd do a little bit of infrared photography while exploring with the kids. So I've brought the GoPro uh, using a selfie stick and I'm about to take a picture of this tree behind me. See behind me there's a tree surrounded by a wall. Even the first subjects I thought it might look alright, the tree's going to pop off bright white. The wall will be nice and dark, and the sky will also be quite black behind it. So we're at f5.6, 800th of a second, ISO 200. Here's the first photo. I want to see what's in there. You want to see what's in where? Right, so Leo wants to go see what's in here. This is the photograph that was just taken. This is Leo behind us. This is boy number two. And I think the rest of the gang are following shortly behind. Let's take a photograph. Going Leo's going to get in there. Leo, shall we take a photograph of you in there? So I've been having a lot of fun with the infrared camera over the last couple of days. Uh, I was out in the front of the street yesterday. So I wanted to take this picture of Harley uh, wrapped around a telegraph light pole thing. It's weird looking with a false colour. I'm not too keen on the false colour of infrared, but I thought it, it kind of worked. It's the first time I've taken a photograph that does actually work in the false colour. But yeah, here's the gang behind us. Let's try and get a photo. Can we all sit on this bench? I'm going to take an infrared photo of you all sat on the bench. Now, one of the fun things with infrared photography is it makes skin look really smooth and people look a bit alienised. It's really odd. So, right, is everybody on the bench? Are we all there? So this one, F5.6, 800th of a second, ISO 100. Here's an infrared photo of the gang. Well, this isn't the first time I've tried this video. I went out a couple of days ago on the motorbike to the Yorkshire Dales and, well, I kind of forgot I was making a YouTube video. I for the most part forgot to stop and take photographs and it was just me riding around the Yorkshire Dales but well I did manage to take one photo of a tractor but I kind of missed the boat with it a little bit the tractor got a little bit further past the grass than I was expecting you see there's a bit of a gap in all the grass and I was hoping to get the tractor in the middle of there but I always thought it looked quite cool with everything sort of bright white apart from the tractor the contrast really Sort of popped off well that's my favorite thing about this infrared photography is the black and white i really like the high contrast and the way the trees and the greenery look just bright white all the time so i'm just walking up this bank here there's a bench at the top of it and i thought we'll just take a picture of a bench surrounded by some green grass which will obviously turn really really white on the infrared let's have a look so there's a bench behind me hopefully it's in there uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, that does work, that. So I'm just going to shoot this all at 5.6, I think, for the most part today. I just want to be a little bit careful because you get some really horrible flares going on. If you've got the sun directly behind you, it's not too bad off at an angle, but there we go. So let's focus on the bench. 5.6 again, ISO 200, thousandth of a second. And I think we'll do it. I don't know. That way. That I've been summoned back now. The plan is we're going to head down to some waterfalls, which I'm mildly curious to see how they look in the infrared. I imagine all of the greenery around it will do the same thing. It will pop off bright white, but what's the water going to do? The water's not going to reflect infrared radiation, is it? I'm kind of expecting white trees and black water, which I think might look quite fun. So let's get down to the waterfall and just see what happens. So typically doing landscape photography, this is kind of the time of day that you would avoid doing it. It's very harsh light and it's not something I would do at this time of day normally, but the infrared, everything is just popping off and it looks so, it looks so dramatic and so different. I was saying the trees are all bright white, everything that's not reflecting the infrared is coming up really dark and it's just making such a nice change to do this. Now this Olympus Pen EP1, I've got the 50mm f1.8 on the front of it, sorry the 25mm 
f1.8 obviously the full frame equivalent of a 50 mil lens with 720 nanometer pig iron filter on the front the camera itself is full spectrum converted so it does still need a filter on the front of it to do this infrared photography but because it's full spectrum you're not limited to just the one sort of wavelength of light you can throw different filters on and do all kinds of different things with it but the 720 i found it works perfectly for me and for what i want to do so walking down the track to the waterfall i'll catch you when we get there You've got an injury. Where's your injury? Oh, yeah, you've got boo boo on your knee, haven't you? <laughs> What's up with you? So, we've now made it down to the bottom of the climb down, and we're alongside the beck now. And what I'm seeing is what I expected on the back of the camera. Everything but the water is popping off bright white. The water is really quite dark. So I'm just going to have a walk around and see if I can't find a photograph to take, including some of the water. It's a bit messy down here. There's a lot of broken trees. There's a lot of rocks in the way. There's a lot of... It's really scruffy, so it's going to be one of them... I'm just going to have to spend a few minutes just finding a photograph. I'm sure there is one down here, but it's just a case of finding that one photograph. Uh, another thing that I'm noticing with the infrared is sun placement is really quite key. See, I'm used to shooting early morning gold now. I don't really have to worry too much about the sun. But if I have any sort of sun in there or any sort of angle close to the sun, I'm getting a lot of lens flare. I'm really noticing these sort of hexagonal lens flares in the sky coming from where the sun is. I don't know if that's because of the filter. I don't know if that's because of the conversion. But it's just something I'm really having to be cautious about. Even in the woodland, I'm finding I'm getting odd little lens flares here and there. It, it could be the lens, it could be the filter. It could be the conversion, or it could just be me and I don't really know what I'm doing, but it is what it is. Now, this is a sketchy bit when you walk into Malian Spout. It's quite rocky, quite stony. Really just be careful. I don't like it. There is a pretty little scene behind me. We're getting closer. I can see one of the waterfalls. I think the waterfalls are going to be what we're going to go for. I'm going to have to try and get the camera steady so I can take something resembling a long exposure. I like long exposures. So let's see what we can do. So, this is Malian Spout Waterfall. It's actually probably the worst waterfall in the area in terms of how impressive it looks, but it's always a fun one to come down to. Now, I'm not going to take a photograph of it today because, well, quite frankly, there isn't really a photograph to be had of it. It's just a fun one to bring the kids to and have a little explore around. Now, I've just been sat on a rock with the camera perched against the rocks, just taking a lot of baseball photographs and the idea when I get home is just to blend those together to get something of a long exposure. But it's really weird seeing the water jet black and everything around it, the screen, the really white. It's kind of if the contrast's been reversed to what I'm normally used to. So it's just making a bit of a fun day out and shooting the infrared on this camera. But yeah, this is Malian Spot Waterfall. We made it down. The kids are whinging. It's probably time to go back up and see what's on the moors. So what have you seen lots of today? Waterfalls. What else have you seen lots of? Rocks. What else have you seen lots of? Water. What did you get told off for doing? From climbing up steps. And why was you doing that? Because I wanted to go further, further ahead. Leo's got no sense of danger, have you? No. No. That's why you're always bleeding, innit? Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for Malian Spout. It's now time to climb back out. Sampo says it's a third of a mile of uphill pain and suffering. That's the busiest I've seen that waterfall. I've been down there a few times and I've never actually seen too many people down there. It was a bit, it was a bit tight for space, I'll put it that way. So I made the call. It's time to go back to the car, have something to eat, and then I think we're going to head into Gothland. And I'm really quite intrigued to see what Gothland's going to look like through infrared. So I'm going to climb out of here, go get some food, and I'll catch you when we get to Gothland. Yeah. 
positive take to get to the end of um, Earth? I don't know how long it will take to get to the end of Earth. So this has definitely been a different kind of experience making the YouTube video with the kids about, but I'll tell you what, using the GoPro on the selfie stick, it's really been a lot easier than carrying second cameras and lenses and tripods and well, all that jazz. It's definitely been, been an interesting kind of day. So right now we're walking into the centre of GoFund. There's a lot of old buildings there and there's a lot of trees there. I'm hoping we'll be able to get some contrast between. Why do you want the camera? Oh, right, take a photo. Right, I've turned it on. Leo's taking a photo of a guy on a lawnmower. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but I'll show you it. Eden, you want to take a photo as well? Daddy. Right. Daddy. Uh, all right, yep. Yeah. Here's Leo's photo. Right, Eden, you can take a photo later on. Ah, oh, don't bring kids out. So I've just stopped by the side of the road. Now the kids have kind of ran off a little bit further on. I'm just going to try and take a photograph of a house with a car load of trees around it. See how that turns out. Eden, you joined us, have you? So, while I walk down here, I just thought I'd talk to you for a second about the actual camera that I'm using today. So it's an Olympus Pen EP1. It's a, I think it's a 12 megapixel sensor on this. It's spec-wise, it's not the best camera that you're ever gonna use, but I picked it up on eBay used, 68 pounds. Infrared conversion, the image stabilisation doesn't work on it, which is kind of why I paired it with the 25mm f1.8, so you've got quite a fast lens thrown on the front of it, so you don't really have to worry too much about image stabilisation with that f1.8 aperture. You're getting reasonably fast shutter speeds, aren't you, across the board, so yeah, just one of them things. It would be nice if the iris did work. I did have a look on the internet, it seems like a fairly straightforward fix, but it does mean dismantling the camera almost entirely, so it's not a really go down. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Whew, it's a warm day. Look. Well, I didn't have a napkin. Oh. Well, fun. There's not a lot here. I was expecting more to take photographs. There really wasn't, so I've got ice cream. And it's time to call it a day. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. It does help the channel and the video out quite a bit. And if you enjoyed it more than that, there is a subscribe button and a small child behind me. You always press that and you see more nonsense from myself every single week. Until next time, and we love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye. <coughs> I mean, I've been.